Welcome everyone to 10.3 polar coordinates. Now we all know and love the Cartesian coordinate system, right? So X's, Y's, things like this. But it turns out there's other coordinate systems out there. So mainly we're going to be dealing with the polar coordinate system uh, in this video. So I'm going to be telling you what are polar coordinates. You need to understand this. Uh, and then we're going to go on to hopefully transition back and forth between polar coordinates and Cartesian coordinates, our well-known uh, and loved uh, coordinate system. Uh, in the next video, we're going to try to graph some polar equations. Um, and then finally, we're going to do a little bit of calculus and calculate uh, the slope of the tangent line uh, of a function given to us uh, in polar coordinates. So let's get to it with what are polar coordinates. So polar coordinates are a way to describe two-dimensional points, right? So our standard way are Cartesian coordinates. And I'm telling you how much to move in the x direction and how much to move in the y direction in order to describe where my point is, right? So in this case, uh, it looks like it's about four out in the x direction, about six up in the y direction. So this would be the point four comma six. But that's not the only way I can describe this point, right? I could also describe it as how much to turn from the origin. So if we start off looking at the positive x axis, how much to turn and then how far should you walk out? So this is going to be our nice theta value here. It's going to be the angle between the positive x-axis and uh, this ray that attaches to our point. And then r is going to be how many steps, essentially, do I want to take in order to hit the point. OK, so this is an example with you know, a specific point, 4, 6. So we could figure out exactly what the r and what the theta are. But let's go ahead and make a generic one with a point x, y to get out some nice formulas that we're going to use for our theorem below. So for this, if it, my point is x, y, then I had to move x units to the right and y units up. I have a theta and an r, which I don't exactly know what the values are, but I know some equations that kind of relate these things. So maybe the first equation that I want to bring up is, hey, this is a right triangle. So therefore, we can use Pythagorean theorem to say that x squared plus y squared has to equal r squared. Another thing that we have about right triangles is we know a definition about sines and cosines. So for instance, we know that sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, so that's y over r. Now quite often you see this written as y is equal to r sine theta. Also, the formula for cosine says it's supposed to be adjacent over hypotenuse, aka x over r. And if we rearrange this, we can see that x is equal to r cosine theta. And then the final formula you sometimes see is for tangent. So tangent of theta is y over x, opposite over adjacent. So these are four important formulas that we need in order to, tra to transform back and forth between polar and Cartesian coordinates. But let's first of all get a handle on just point, uh, sorry, just plotting polar coordinates. So here I have a theta r value. So theta is 7 pi over 6, and r equals 2. So first, theta is 7 pi over 6. So looking at my graph here, I need to find my 7 pi over 6. It's a little past our pi right here. So this is our nice line. This is what I'm along, and I need to be two out in the positive direction, which is towards seven pi over six. So there's our first point that corresponds to our answer in A. For B, for B, notice uh, our theta value is negative pi over three. Now I don't have a negative pi over three on uh, my coordinate system. We need to remember that while going pi over three talks about going in a counterclockwise direction, as we could know from our good old trig classes, so going negative pi over 3 should be in the clockwise direction. So here is this ray that we're along, or this line that we're along. And in this case, our r value is negative 3. So that would be positive 3 in the direction of our uh, negative pi over 3. So going negative 3 should be going backwards. So we're actually up here, headed in the direction of 2 pi over 3. So that's our answer for b. And then finally for c. Right, we need to go 3 pi. Well, we have up through 2 pi, essentially, uh, and we just need to keep going. So here's 1 pi, here's 2 pi's, here's 3 pi's. So here is the line 
that corresponds to 3 pi, headed in the pi direction, essentially. And we need to go r equals 0. So we don't move it all from the origin. So this is our answer for c. So we can see that the angles and the radius can actually be negative. We can have positive values, we can have negative values, and they all describe points in the plane. All right, let's go ahead and practice then converting. First, we're going to convert from polar coordinates into Cartesian coordinates, and then the next example will convert back. So when we are converting from polar into Cartesian, the claim is we have two important formulas, y equals r sine theta and x equals r cosine theta. These are really going to help us out. So I already know what r and theta are. So if I want x, I just need to plug it into r cosine theta. Well, r is 2, cosine of 0 is 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. y is r sine theta, so that's 2 times sine of 0, which is 0. So our corresponding point in Cartesian coordinates is 2, 0. How about for b? Again, we go ahead and plug it into our formula. Our x value is going to be 5 root 2 over 2. And our y value is going to be negative 5 root 2 over 2. And that's because sine of negative pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. So our final answer, our xy coordinate, is going to be 5 root 2 over 2, comma, negative 5 root 2 over 2. All right, now that we can convert from polar into Cartesian coordinates, let's go backwards. We want to go Cartesian to polar. So in this case, we're going to use the other two equations. So that is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and tangent of theta is equal to y over x. So our first problem, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So this gives us that r squared has to be equal to 9 which means that r could be either positive or negative 3. Tangent of theta has to be y over x, so this is going to be 3 over 0, which is undefined. So can you tell me where tangent of theta is undefined? Well, this is going to be at odd multiples of pi over 2. So wherever there's a vertical asymptote for tangent. So the most common one is going to be pi over 2. But you could also have things like negative pi over 2. You could have 3 pi over 2. There's lots of values where tangent is undefined. Right? So now we need to use a little bit of common sense here. Right? That we have options. We have the point 0, 3. That's our x, y point here. And I need to know how to describe this using polar coordinates. Well, we could rotate up pi over 2. And then in that case, we would want to go out positive three steps. But there are other ways to describe this point. For instance, if I had gone theta is negative pi over 2, well then, if I'm facing in the negative pi over 2 direction, I'd want to walk backwards three steps. Right? So let's look at this picture a little bit. If I go negative pi over 2, that's pi over 2 in the clockwise direction, I need to go backwards three steps. So that means my r value is going to be negative three. But luckily, r can be either positive or negative three. So because there are many ways to represent points in polar coordinates, there are often infinitely many correct answers, unless if you add in a few restrictions. So another one would be three pi over two, comma negative three. Like I said, there are lots and lots of ways to represent points in the polar coordinate system. These are all correct answers. Let's go ahead and do one more here. B, x, y is negative 2, 2. So that tells me that r squared is equal to, well, negative 2 squared, which is 4, plus 2 squared, which is 4. So that gives me r is either plus or minus the square root of 8, which is the same thing as 2 times root 2. Tangent of theta, well, if I go ahead and plug in my y and my x, we get negative 1. So when is tangent of theta equal to negative 1? 
Well, that means theta has to be 3 pi over 4, or negative pi over 4, or again, there are infinitely many ways to make tangent of theta equal to negative 1. These are just some of the most common ones. So again, let's go ahead and plot this out. I know that we have, uh, if I went negative pi over 4, for instance, and I'm trying to hit the point negative 2, 2. So 2 to the left, 2 up. So if I chose my theta value to be negative pi over 4, it looks like I need to move backwards. So that's going to have a negative r value. So therefore, my theta r combination should be negative pi over 4, comma, negative 2, root 2. On the other hand, if I had chosen my theta to be equal to 3 pi over 4, well, then I need to be facing in that direction, the 3 pi over 4 direction which is this way, 3 pi over 4. And in that case, I need to move positively 2 times root 2. So there are two possibilities for answer B. Again, there are infinitely many correct answers. We should usually choose one of these straightforward ones, though. All right, and that's a good place for us to take a break. Go ahead and stretch your legs. Then when we come back, we're going to graph some polar equations and do a little bit of calculus. I'll see you shortly.